A quick shout out to our sponsor and podcast home app, Anchor FM. Do you want to start a podcast? As your host of coaching you through all things education and the founder of ANC Unlimited, I use Anchor FM for easy editing, connecting with other podcast apps such as Spotify, Apple, and of course now iHeartRadio. It's free, so I can create as many episodes or bonus episodes for my listeners as I choose. Sign up today at anchor.fm. We just have to differentiate with our staff and really kind of have discussions one-on-one with each of them and find out what they need. And, and you're going to see a smorgasbord, right? You're going to find this, this buffet of all different things that they need instead of just Rick thinking like, yeah, I think everybody needs this today. Connection, engagement, rigor, success. Here on Coaching You Through All Things Education podcast, we are building a legacy of success together, one episode at a time, each Tuesday at noon. As your host, Anne Labangana Clay of ANC Unlimited, we will unpack relevant topics in education together. And when I'm not podcasting, coaching, or consulting, stop by our website, acunlimited.org, for our new blog, Coaching You EDU, and a menu of services. If something resonates with you during this episode, message me on the podcast app of your choice or leave a comment on LinkedIn, our company Facebook page, or on Twitter. Our guests appreciate your feedback. Check out the story notes for our social media details. And certainly, if you have an episode suggestion, send it to coachingallthingsedu at gmail.com. Now let's dive in. All right, turn your earbuds up and help me welcome Rick Jetter to episode 23, which is part four of our Thriving in Leadership series on Coaching You Through All Things Education podcast. I am over the moon excited to have Rick with us today. He is an educational leader, author, publisher, keynote speaker, co-founder of the National Consulting Powerhouse, Pushing Boundaries Consulting, and a role model for me. Welcome to the podcast, Rick. Oh, thanks for having me, and It's so good to see you. What a great smile for the new year, you know? <laughs> yes, we're in 2021, and I tell you what, we are thankful, right, for uh, seeing another year and all the possibilities that are yet to come, right, Rick? That's right, that's right. Indeed. Well, for our first question, I have had the honor of reading your works over the years, collaborating on one of your upcoming projects, and hearing you speak live. You add so much value. For the benefit of our listening audience, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, yeah. Just uh, you know, I've, I have this beautiful family and a wonderful wife and kids. Uh, I'm a grandpa oh. as well. My stepson and my daughter-in-law, they're in, uh, out in Guam right now. And uh, I'm Papa Jay. You know, I'm a grandfather, right? <laughs> yes. So, uh, it, it, it is a wonderful 2021, and there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of great work that uh, my colleagues and I are trying to put out there. And um, you gave me a great intro. Thank you. You know, yeah, an educator, um, assistant head of schools with Maritime Charter School right in Buffalo, New York, right in the inner city. And uh, 
former principal elsewhere and assistant principal and teacher and all that jazz, 20 years in education, loved, just loved every minute of it, even when times were hard and I had to bounce back, right? That resiliency. So um, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling healthy and we have a lot of work to do, right? (laughs) Indeed. Yes, there's so much work to be done. And, you know, and you said, you know, that all the things that you have done, all the roles that you've had, you've made an impact in each one of them. And yet it doesn't, it just feel like you're just put a little dent in things, Rick. Yeah. But, you know, look at the people that you and I are working with right now, right? All these little dents uh, really is going to, you know, shape a new piece of metal. So, (laughs) I mean, look at, look at the people you're, you're talking with and you're writing with and, Right. You know, your podcast, these dents are amazing, right? When we put them all together. Yes. So, so let's just let's just dent and dent and keep, <laughs> let's pound that metal. That's right, Rick. That's right. Yes, I love it. Absolutely. Because a masterpiece is, is forming as we speak, right? It is. Indeed. <laughs> all right. Our next question. So the pandemic has taken a toll on everyone's emotions, naturally. What keeps you grounded to lead with purpose? You know, I've really been thinking a lot about this, having some time off over the holidays, and I'm really rethinking a lot of what I've been doing. Sure. Um, You know, I I put out a a couple of tweets the other day and and said, you know, some of our teachers are kind of tired of us saying self-help, right? Self-help. We need self-help. and. You know, some of them are fine and they're, they don't, they don't need that anymore. So right. I think the, the biggest thing that I've learned is that we have to kind of differentiate the needs of our staff members um, like we do with our kids. That's right. Right. And, you know, not everyone needs blanket self-help. Not everyone needs to hear from the school leaders about, well, we think you need this because it's tough times. Right. Some people are doing great. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and we just have to differentiate with our staff and really kind of have discussions one-on-one with each of them and find out what they need. And and you're going to see a smorgasbord, right? You're going to find this this buffet of all different things that they need instead of just Rick thinking like, yeah, I think everybody needs this today. So right. um, no, I'm glad you asked that question because I've really been thinking about it and my own needs are different than the school leader down the street. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know? So great question. Yeah. No, I like um, that you said that because a lot of people do blanket, um, you know, the needs of our staff, the needs of our students, as you mentioned. And, um, you know, as I hope we'll unpack a little later, things to stop doing, right? Um, But definitely differentiating each person, each person's need, right? Not even a team of, you know, sometimes I think of, you know, I'm an instructional coach and, you know, we work with a team at times as opposed to individuals. And we say, oh, that team is really strong. You know, they must not need anything, right? But they do, you know, um, individuals need, teams need, schools need, and it's different. And administrators, like you said, it's everybody could be, excuse me, dealing with things that are different and there are people that are thriving like you said there's a whole a whole range so i love that you brought that point out all right let's see can you unpack pushing boundaries consulting's impact and what legacy you hope to leave yeah you know so and this isn't a plug for a business or anything like that but the story is kind of interesting. I'm glad you asked me about pushing boundaries, not for a, a monetary money-making purpose, right? That's not what this is about, but it, right. how it was born is really kind of cool. So I met Rebecca through social media. This was back when she was in Arizona uh, living out there. And I got this this message on LinkedIn and she said, I read one, one of your books. It really helped me out. Thank you. And I I showed my wife this, this in LinkedIn message, right? I'm like, look at somebody from from Arizona read my book. Like, wow, I can't believe it. You know, Arizona. You know, it was so foreign to me. You know, right, right. And I'm like, wow, this is great. So from there, 
um, Rebecca and I, you know, started to become social media friends. Mm. And it got to the point where I, I was like, hey, Rebecca, you know, what, what do you think about maybe co-writing this book with me, which was The Dunk Tank back in 2016? Yes, indeed. She's like, wow, yeah, let's do it. You know, that sounds like a really cool concept, you know? <laughs> um, and it got, you know, a few publishers were interested in it. And one publisher wanted it right away, and they wanted to actually get it to the press right away. I won't name who that was. Um, but the problem is, is they wanted us to take a chapter out of it that was very controversial. Ooh. And it was about educators and drugs and alcohol. Uh, and Rebecca and I were like, no way. We're not taking that out. And Dave Burgess, yeah, Dave Burgess came along, and he was like, this book is unbelievable, man. And, and that chapter, chapter six, is probably the best chapter in that book. And it's staying, right? And, and he said, that's your manifesto. And we're going to do this, right? Love it. From there, from that point forward, our lives changed. You know, Dave is just such a great guy. and Another um, powerhouse. <laughs> just, a, just a smart, caring human being who knows, you know, how to get people's words out. And from there, Rebecca and I, we wrote another one, right? Let them speak about student voice. <laughs> and we're writing other things right now. And we've got all these projects on the table. So at, at one point, she and I were talking and, and I said, Rebecca, we, we got to just start pushing more boundaries. With it. And we both looked at each other and we're like, oh, my God, pushing boundaries. That's what we really want to do on this, pl on this planet, right? Yes. We don't want to just hang out like spiders we want to like make a river you were talking about putting a dent that's right, right. that's right mm -hmm. so if, you, if you look at that pushing boundaries icon okay you know there's that that shifting wall and that that spoke to us so heavily and from there we started to reach out to people all across the nation hey you want to be part of this pln you know you want to do this let's oh yeah you've got these skills let's get together you know let's hang out and Let's build something that's that's an anti-status quo thing. That's and it right. just grew right. mm -hmm. and grew. And we're up to about 20 affiliates. Um, now, we don't necessarily have contracts, you know, for all of them. And we're not mm -hmm. consulting all the time. And But these are people who believe in the mission. Yes. And we spill out all sorts of content and stuff. Um, yes. to make those dents. So that's how that's how PB really was born. Um, and it's something that, you know, I, I wear shirts that have that icon and I'm proud of it, you know, like, right. okay. and I'm not saying I'm perfect. I mean, I was a train wreck years ago. I made tons of mistakes. I've learned along the way. Um, mm -hmm. I've gotten sober along the way. So there, and, there's yeah. all these stories that, that we live through. Um, and those stories can really change the status quo. Ooh. Yes, indeed. Well, <laughs> the status quo is we we <laughs> we're not interested in that, right, Rick? I mean, you know, that is not our thing at all. We want to change it. We want it to be different. We want to think out of the box, right? And um, you know, I know that pushing boundary, like you said, I can I can see the imagery of your logo, and I understand that concept very well. You know, um, education from from pre-K or from birth, right, <laughs> all the way up through continued education um, is changing, right? I mean, this is an amazing time. I think this pandemic has has really helped to push the boundaries just a little bit further, Rick, if I if I may. But before that, you and your organization were doing that. Uh, you know, through your literature, through your speaking engagement, through, you know, your tweets and, and everything else have tried to help us as educators to get it. You know, it doesn't look one way for anybody. You know, we talked about that a few minutes ago, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, how this pandemic has affected us. But just in general, Right. Everybody's needs and everybody's wants and everybody's desires and everybody's goals are different. And they all play a part when you're in that classroom, when you're in that 
uh, you know, non-traditional classroom, right? Uh, when you're learning on your own, right? I, I assumed, I, I know for a fact, Rick, I don't assume <laughs> that you are a lifelong learner as well. You know, and so we have to stop thinking about things as they fit inside this box. Like that's my big thing, but the way I like to say it is, you know, in the box, you know, and out of the box. And we have to just for the benefit of our future, really. So that's fantastic, Rick. I, you get now you got me on my soapbox. <laughs> oh, let's yeah, I know. Let's get right now. <laughs> I mean, I was there with you when you were speaking about, you know, your passion just exudes, like, you know, I, just amazing, absolutely uh, fantastic, and fun, right? Yes. And fun. <laughs> All right. Could you tell us a little bit about your upcoming book, which has yet to be released? We're really excited about it. Stop 100. Oh, gosh. You know, this is one of those things, right? It's uh, yes. it it's it's telling it like it is, mm. and it's not yeah. sugarcoating anything. And you know what? I, I've got to tell you, some people are offended by the book. Oh, they they feel that instead of saying stop, right, things that educators should stop doing, that it sounds it sounds a little mean, right? <laughs> Well, that maybe we should say, well, you should start doing this uh, and get rid of the word stop, right? Uh -huh. Well, okay, that's an opinion. Yeah. But then, I've got, right, I put this, this plan together of let's get 100 authors, let's get 100 chapters about things that all educators should stop doing, right? And this is like one of a, of a series that's going to come out. No. There's going to be one for school leaders, one for parents, one for students, right? To get everybody on the same page. Yes. And uh, I, so I threw this thing out on social media. I'm like, hey, anybody want to write a chapter for this? I got seven, and there were 762 oh, people in like nine days wow. across all the social media networks, right? incredible They're like yeah man let's let's do this i want to write a chapter and this is just cool right <laughs> and so my first order of business was how do i how do i make cuts right it's like i'm, I'm <laughs> i feel like the soccer coach has got to make cuts oh, right and i'm looking at this thing and we did you know i wrote a chapter in the book obviously so i was looking for 99 people out of you know 762 <laughs> And I just, I kind of, right, there were people I knew who were going to be part of the project, people who were already part of my PLN. And then there were these other people out there that were like, oh, let's try this out, right? <laughs> so, right, and your chapter is unbelievable. Oh. So, so we get, right, Ed, so we get this group of people. Right. And, and every single one of them believes, mm. not in a book believes in the fact that it's okay to tell someone to stop something. That's it's okay, right. right? If you've got somebody playing with matches, you're not going to take a moment and say, you know, you really shouldn't play with matches because you might, but no, you're going to say, put that, put, <laughs> stop playing with matches, right? That's exactly. <laughs> So, so you, you know, that's kind of where the controversy comes in, that maybe it's, it's not nice to say stop doing. The first chapter in the book written by Corey Orlando, just an amazing woman. Right. The first chapter is stop harming kids. Oh, gosh. Stop harming kids. So, so and she wrote this. Right. Yeah. Why soften these things up? We don't have time. No, exactly. Right. Let's get, let's get everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. Let's just tell it like it is. Sure. And you know what? If people don't want to want the book or want to look at, that's fine. Just don't don't look at it. But then you've got all these other people who are like, "Oh man, I got to get this in the hands of everybody because then we all can speak the same discourse." Exactly. Let's just. It's okay to tell somebody to cut it out. That's right. You know. 
Because so, there are urgent uh, issues. Am I not right? I mean, every single one of those chapters are things that are urgent. They're things that must stop now. You know, they, they, in order for kids to get the best that we should be giving to them. Go ahead, Brent. Yeah. And, you know, I, I wrote chapter 49, which is uh, stop talking crap about your colleagues. Mm, there you go. Now, I guess I could have written it differently and said, you know, you really shouldn't, you shouldn't be mean to your colleagues. You should be nice. Right. Okay. That's one way, I guess, but no, <laughs> stop talking crap about your colleagues. Right. <laughs> and then, right. So if you're a principal right. and you want to just look at it, we're going to get the message out. We're going to hear it. We're all going to read this. Mm. And I, I, I think we're going to be a better organization if we all follow these things. Indeed. Indeed. And you know what, Rick? It makes me think about how probably that message, whatever, like if it's stop, stop talking crap about your colleagues, right? That's not the first time somebody's heard that, meaning a colleague, you know, a person who's doing that. That's not the first time they've heard that. It just hurt. They haven't heard it in this way, in a more, in a more direct way. So and that's right. fine. there's no way on earth that people are doing these things and no one's noticing is what I guess is what I want to say. Let me say it like that. That's right. And, and they're not using it. I mean, one could look at it this way. It, maybe crap is a little lighter than what people are actually saying out there. You know, I mean, I lightened it, right? <laughs> and what people are really saying are the other words. You better believe it. This is a PG book, isn't it? Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, right? Oh, my God. Oh, well, we are looking forward to it. You know, it, it's an excellent topic. You definitely touched on something that obviously 700 some <laughs> people plus are interested in hearing more about or having something in their hands to be able to share, like you said, with um, their colleagues and, and across the world uh, because they're, they're, th they're international. Those are not U.S. related topics. You know, unfortunately, people are people across the world, right? Their habits, that bad habits that people have put in into our workplace, right? And they definitely impact kids. And so def I'm, I'm so looking forward to it uh, when it comes out to share it with the world as well. Oh, so glad you're a part of the project. It, oh. It's terrific. <laughs> I'm humbled to be a part of it. It's, I was really excited to get that chapter going. <laughs> All right, let's see. Can you share three tips for our educators, students, and parents who are listening on the podcast? Yeah, you know, there's probably a million things you and I could talk all day. Um, I, I would say, right, we talked about differentiate mm -hmm. with staff members, with students. You even have to do that with parents, That's right? Sure. Um, just communicate, talk. I love talking with people. Um, you know, when parents come in and they want to, they've got a problem or they want to shoot the breeze and, you know, and we we tell it like it is. Maybe that's the third thing, right? Yeah. differentiate, um, communicate, and tell it like it is. Right. You know, people really do appreciate when you can just sit down and say like, hey, here's, I'm kind of seeing things like this. Let's sure. talk about it. Sure. You know, they, they appreciate that. I think the sugar coating has gone away. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's like that Tootsie Roll pop. I, we're, at the, we're at the Tootsie Roll right now. Let's just get right to the Tootsie Roll. There you go. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I think people really do appreciate that. And very, very rarely will I have someone who's who believes their feelings are heard because we're having an honest discussion. Um, they may not like, you know, what the discussion is, mm -hmm. but later on, it's only there to help everyone in the organization. So, right, yeah. Um, and, and, not have things spill down to the kids and, and hurt them. And well, that's why we're all here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, that's definitely why we're all here, Rick. <laughs> all right. Those are great pieces of advice. 
And our last question is trending on the show. If you could be, if you could have a billboard, so let me try that again. Uh, this question is trending on the show. <laughs> if you could have a billboard with anything on it, what legacy message would you print on it and why? Yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stick with all the memorable uh, school leaders and teachers that I've had, you know, in my life. Okay. I think I appreciate it. And I'm going to go back to telling it, tell it like it is. Um, tell it like it is. And even if that's a starting point for a, dis, for a, a tough conversation to take place, mm -hmm. let's just start with getting it off our chest. Right. right. And, and, and then from there, the outcome is is usually going to be productive. If we if we kind of hang tight and we don't really say what's on our mind or what's in our hearts, we just kind of, you know, we're careful. We're under the radar. Mm -hmm. We might not ever really, truly get off our chest what we need to. That's and true. Um, I think, again, we don't have time. For, you know, our kids are counting on us. That's the pushing boundaries motto. Our yes. kids are counting on us. Amen. Amen. So let's let's step up. You know, to the plate and, and tell it like it is. Yes, yes. I know, Rick. Sorry, you get me. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that, that passion you have is real. Like it's contagious. You know, I just can't help but but just comment over you because it's so so true. 